the How To Series, brought to you by the Women's Business Center of North Alabama. Hi, I'm David McElhaney with Global Recruiters of Huntsville. This is an installment of the How To Series for the Women's Business Center of North Alabama, and I want to talk to you about how to use your skills on LinkedIn. All right, so we're going to move over now to Find. Okay, in Find, you've got this little search window over here. And so you come over here, and you type in Bob Jones, and you click on this little magnifying glass, and lo and behold, there are 18,607 Bob Joneses in the system. Okay, not a very good search, right? You're not going to be able to do very much with that. Uh, but you can see here they're all listed. Okay, I, this is almost a useless search. I don't recommend that you ever use it. What I recommend that you do is you come over here right beside it and click on this advanced button. When you click on the advanced button, it opens up this advanced search. And so now you've got lots of different searches you can do. You can change your industries, you can change your relationships, your languages, company size. I use the boxes up at the top. And most often I use just a couple of them, the keywords box and the postal code. Because usually you know the general area of where you're looking for somebody. If you don't, then you can do it with a wide open without the postal code, but you're going to get that massive search depending on how common the name is. Okay, so in this case, if we come over here and we type in Bob Jones, and then we come down here to our zip code and we type in a local zip code 35801, and we can change this to the mileage we want. I typically use 50 miles circumference. If you go out to 100 miles, that will basically take you Nashville to Birmingham kind of circumference. So 50 miles keeps us in the northern Alabama kind of circumference, lower, lower um, uh, Tennessee area, but that's the normal default that I use is 50 miles. But anyway, so you click on search here now, and it will go out there and we'll find all the Bob Joneses in this zip code in a 50 mile circumference. And now it narrows that search down to 145, okay? So much easier uh, job now to search and find the content, what you're looking for inside this, inside this, um, this panel. Now you'll notice a couple of unusual things. You can see we've got Bob Jones here, but here we've got a Robert Jones, here we've got a James Robert Jones, here we've got a Daniel Stevens. Now why in the world would Daniel Stevens come up in a search for Bob Jones? He may have gone to Bob Jones High School. He may have worked for Bob Jones Automotive. He may have a cousin listed in his profile um, that gave him a recommendation whose name is Bob Jones. He might, for whatever reason, he's got Bob Jones somewhere in his profile. Okay, So it's going to find everybody in it. And as you scroll down further in this list, you're going to find a lot more people that aren't named Bob Jones that are in this list because they've got Bob Jones in their profile. Okay, so think about how you want to search for people um, and how critical that can be. Now, Bob Jones may not be enough. You may want to go back up here and type in Bob Jones High School and come down here and click on your search again. And now that's going to change that search to 92. Okay, now it's found 92 people with Bob Jones High School in their profile. Okay, see the value of that window that you can make that search and you can do, there's a whole, there's a whole five hour lecture on Boolean searches, how you tie words together to make these searches work. But that's one methodology for doing that is by using those two things, using the, the keyword search with a zip code to, uh, to look for people in a specific area. Now it may be that you know the title. Um, of the person, or you may know that they work for SAIC, um, that they're a, 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 a capture manager at SAIC. You, anything that you can use in here to narrow that search, you can use that as part of your, your, your criteria for searching. So make it as narrow as possible, the, more, the narrower it is, the, the better your search is going to be looking for the person you're, you're looking for. Or if, like for instance, I'm looking for an electrical engineer at SAIC, I might just type that in there. I might type in electrical engineer uh, SAIC and put a local zip code in here and do a search to find out how many of those people are electrical engineers that I can call up and see about getting them into a job. Or I can call up to see uh, executives. Um, or maybe I want to look at executive assistants. 
so I can talk to the executive assistant and say, hey, can you help me out? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So you can use this for a whole host of, of different methodologies for searching people. All right, now, in this search window, you'll notice all these are marked as number one, okay? That's because those, are, those people are in my direct connect. They're part of that 2,400 people that I'm directly connected with, okay? So you'll see this change as you go out into the list, one to two, two to three, and so on, as you get out into, into your various lists. Let's see if we can get down to, maybe let's go out to four and see what four looks like. Okay, these are seconds, okay? So I'm not directly connected to them. You can see here, I'm, I've got seven shared connections. So if I click on Panda's seven shared connections, it'll open up the screen and show who those seven people are that I'm connected to that I can go out and link to to get me connected, okay? Because um, LinkedIn doesn't allow you to get connected to people that you don't know. That's the whole premise of their search process. Now. LinkedIn and I argue about this all the time because LinkedIn believes that you should build a quality network, okay? I argue that it's like childcare. You know, my, my daughters are grown now, but when they were little, I say, okay, it's, um, let's see, it is 4.48. Uh, okay, I can be home by 6. Um, the kids don't go to bed till 8, so I can get two hours of quality time in with my girls tonight, right? wrong. You know that's not the way that works. Quality time with your children is a product of quantity of time. You, you can't say that tonight's going to be quality time. You just got to go spend the time. My point is, I think that this is the same way. How do I know he's a good quality connection until I connect with Jeff and we interact together and we see how we can help each other before I know he's a quality connection. So my theory is connect with everybody and then sort out who's the good and the bad. Okay, because you don't know that until you connect with each other and try to share information. Okay, so I try to connect with everybody. And if you try to connect with me, I will connect with everybody. So if you need a connection, I'm your guy. Um, because number one, it helps me with my business. Number two, the more connections you have, the, the better your system is and you get, you get credits for those as well. In my business, there may be a candidate that they know. Um, they have, are some, uh, Joe just got fired and, um, and his wife has been relocated and they're moving to Connecticut. And he says, hey, this guy's an engineer. Um, he's moving to Connecticut. Can, can you help him? And I may very well be able to. So in my business, it helps to be connected everywhere. For everybody else, I recommend the, 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 the go ahead and do the connections um, because you're building your database and you never know who's gonna be a friend of that person that sees that you're connected. They, they go in there and they find Joe down there in Texas, who's a real estate agent, and they see he's connected to you and he's got trouble with his computer and he says, oh, hey, there's a computer guy, maybe he can help me. I mean, you just never know. So I recommend you connect with everybody. Now, um, you can do that multiple ways. This is the way they want you to connect, is through people. When you violate that program, um, you can sometimes get in trouble. As an example, when you come over here and you, you see this person, you can, you can do a couple things. First of all, you can send an in-mail. Does everybody know what an in-mail is? Well, if you have a free service, you probably don't know what an in-mail is because you have to buy these, okay? So if you want to send an in-mail, you have to do an upgrade. And then when you upgrade, you get three free, okay, um, uh, in-mails a month that you can send out, okay? That's like, and I, I always argue there's nothing free in this world. You know, you get free shipping. Believe me, they've built the price in so that they can cover the shipping. You didn't get anything for free, okay? If you get 90-day, um, same as cash terms, for free, you didn't get 90 days free, folks. Trust me, they built it in, okay? So these aren't free either. You buy, you do the upgrade, and you get the three free, okay? If you do the next upgrade, you get nine free, okay? Um, and those free in-mails allows me to contact you without using any of this system stuff. So I get a free pass to you to connect you even though we're not in the same system, okay? So that's what that's for. All right. Second way you connect is by getting introduced. So as in this case, I can connect with one of these people and say, hey, Wendy, would you connect me with Panda? And then I have to wait for Panda to, to Wendy to, to read. Wendy's busy. She's out traveling this week. She doesn't get in until Friday night. 
she's kind of lazy on the weekend, so it might be Monday before Wendy ever sees my request. Um, and so a week has gone by, and I'm still not connected to Panda. So I don't like using this. I'm going to take the direct approach. And so what I do over here is I come over here and I click on Add to my network. And that takes me directly into the system and allows me to connect with her. Now, I'm in the same penalty box that you're in. Okay. See, it asked me for my email address, for their email address. So if I don't know Joshua's email address, I'm not going to be able to connect. What happened was I had a big search going on a couple of weeks ago, and I connected to a lot of people. And typically, see what this says right here? It has this little default message. It says, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. I wish that they would take that out of there. It's a nice little default to make it faster for you so that you can put in the, the you can connect to the name and you can just hit the send button. But this tells me that somebody didn't even look at my profile when they, when they sent that to me. They just want a connection. Okay. Well, in my case, I'm going to connect with them anyway, but a lot of people don't. So what I do is I take that out and I say, Hi, I'm David McElhaney. I'm an executive recruiter at Global Recruiters of Huntsville. I saw your profile and saw that you're in the engineering field, and I'm trying to connect with a, an engineer at your company. Would you, would you connect with me? To um, a, a certain limit, and I don't know what that is, you'll get a message that pops up above this yellow box in here that says, you're in danger of, of being um, uh, penalized um, because you're connecting, with, you're connecting with too many people that connect with you. I don't know. Remember when you get the profile of people that want to connect with you, it says connect or it says uh, accept, I don't know, or report. Okay. So if you, if you get too many I don't knows, you go into this penalty box. If you get too many reports, you go into this penalty box. And that's where you and I are now. We're in this penalty box. And so what you have to do then is go down here to uh, send feedback, and you have to send them an email that says, I'm sorry, I, I violated your rules. I was busy trying to connect with a lot of people. It was important for me to find a specific individual I was looking for, and I'm sorry. And they'll turn you back on and clean you up and say, okay, don't do it again. And then, you know, a few weeks down the road, you know, you get in the penalty box again, and he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the only alternative to this is, I have a I have a separate a second profile that I use now right now while I'm in the penalty box to to get around. There are two reasons why you get this message. One is when we're in the penalty box like this. The second is in the admin section. I'll show you that in a few minutes where you can specify that I'm not going to connect with you unless you know my email address. It can be up to the user. In my case, it's not. It's because I'm in this penalty box. But uh, but that's that that is a, an option that you have on how people how accessible you are to people to connect with you. Right. It, this when you're in a penalty box, you get this time after time after time. You get it after you've had the notice up there for a while that you're in danger of getting in the penalty box, and then. You get like us, and you're in this penalty box until they review you and help you clean up your, your box and then set you back up again. Okay? Now, if I click on this little button here, remember that goes out to my tweet account. So I click on this, and I just sent that message out to all my, uh, my followers on Twitter, and you notice that it posted right here. Okay? So all these 2,400 people just received that update that I've taught this class. Okay, so that's, that's where that goes. Okay, depending on how many people you're connected with decides how fast this will move. As, as an example, if I go down here to the bottom of my screen, you'll see that this message was eight minutes ago. Okay, because I've got so many contacts, my page cleans quickly. Okay, so if I'm not there right now, in 10 minutes, my message will be gone. You know, if you've only got 35 connections, that message may be there for a day. Okay, so it just depends on how busy your system is, how quickly that fades through. Now, you made an interesting comment about this. Can I use this for promotions? And the answer to that is yes, you can. However, don't abuse this because people get tired of seeing your stuff, okay? Particularly if you're, if you're using the, this tweet thing. And by the way, you can do this the other way. You can, you can set up your Twitter account to send messages to your LinkedIn. And then you get messages, I'm at the grocery store, I'm picking up the kids, I'm at the ballpark, I'm at the hairdresser, I'm at the... 
makes me crazy. Okay, so when you start getting things like that, or if you're using it for promotions, I caution the um, the uh, like the Mary Kay folks about this. You know, you don't want to do a hair cream special today and a nail polish special tomorrow and a foot massage thing Thursday and every day doing a special because people get tired of seeing that. And what they do is they come out here and they click on this little hide and you are gone. You are no longer on their page down here. So if you have something important and we've gotten tired of your nonsense, we're not going to see that important thing. So don't get carried away using this thing for self-promotion. Okay? Use it judiciously. We're going to go over to the next section, which is the, uh, the networking section, and that is primarily in your group section. If you click on this groups button, it opens up another search window for you to see, and it's right up here in this search window. <clears throat> and this allows you to search groups. Groups are critical for your networking piece because it allows you to associate with a lot more people. You know, again, I'm connected with 2,400 people, so that's a pretty big bank. But if you think about some of these groups, there are 100,000 in some of these groups, 150,000, 200,000 people in a group. So you think about it, in my case, I can send out a message, that new job I got for that electrical engineer, and it goes out to those 2,400 people. That's pretty powerful. But what if I can hit these groups and hit 100 or 200,000 people in a five-minute stroke? That's, that's a big deal. So you want to be in groups that make sense to you. So think about any groups that you're involved with and what makes sense for you to be in the groups. Now, you typically try to you think about groups that you, in the business you're in. For example, when I first got involved in this thing, I connected with all these different recruiting groups, okay? Until I finally realized that, wait a minute, those are all my competitors. I'm sharing all my jobs with my competitors, so I'm no longer in any, com any um, recruiting groups. I'm in groups where I can find people to fill my jobs, or I can, in your case, you can find people to be associated with, okay? So if you typed in here executive assistants, you can see there's all kinds of groups. Um, so here's a group, uh, global executive assistants. There's 1,800 people in that group. Okay, there's 7,000 in this group, there's 9,000 in this group, there's 2,000 in this group, 12,000 in this group. So those might be a group, these might be groups you want to be involved in so you can network with these people and say, hey, I'm out here, I'm looking for a job, you guys know anything. So there's all, think about any kind of business you're in, hobby you're in, if you're in a knitting club and you want to find other knitters in the area, you can probably find a group that you can connect with. So virtually anything you want to think about you can find a group to be associated with. So those are groups that you want to network in so that, again, you get more exposure, you get activities, you get involved in the, in the there's a discussion panel in there so you can go in and, and get involved in the discussions. Ask people questions um, because the more exposure you get in the group, the more active you are in the group, the more people want to be connected with you, the more points you get, the way you build your search engine optimization. So that's a great thing for you to be involved in these groups. Now, you can see here on my screen, here are some local groups that, um, that I recommend you be involved in. So particularly this top one, everybody write this down, linked across the valley. This is a really important group, okay? It's really important because it's my group. I uh, took over ownership of this group a couple months ago, and I would like for all of you to become members of my group. Um, so you just go in there, you type link across the valley in the window up top, and go into there and click on join the group, and I will, I will accept you as members in the group. Um, but all these are local groups, linked across the valley, uh, linked local in Huntsville, Huntsville um, Network Huntsville, Network AL. This is a PMI um, group. This is Huntsville Professional Networks, Tennessee Valley Networks, uh, Huntsville Chamber, Huntsville Technology Experts. All those are local Huntsville groups. And you, so you might want to join any of these, but you specifically want to join Linked Across the Valley. When you log on anybody's profile, we'll just log on mine. You can, as you scroll down here, you'll see down below these feeds, you'll see all these, these are, here are all the groups that I'm involved in, okay? So you can, you can see which groups are there, makes sense for you to join, click on them, and it'll take you to those groups, and then you can click on join on them, mm -hmm. okay? So, so network with these groups, make it as accessible as possible to connect with as many groups. You can be in, you can be in 52 groups. Now, you may have noticed up here, that on mine, I was actually in 58 groups because I'm in some subgroups. Subgroups like you see this group right here, okay? 
anywhere where it says subgroup on my screen there. Um, those, those don't count as groups. Here's some, some of these IT jobs. This is the subgroup here and those sort of things. Um, subgroups don't count as your main group, so you're allowed to be in 52 groups. Mine says 58 because I've got some of those subgroups in there. All right, the last thing I want to talk about before we run out of time is the admin section. So if you'll, when you go on your screen, and uh, let me just go back to my home screen to make it easier for you to see where we are. From the home screen, over here in the upper top, you see where it has your name. Well, it has my name now, but it'll have your name when you log in. You can go to log out or go to settings. So you want to click on settings, and it's going to take you into a screen that has all your admin stuff in it. Now, it asks you for a login, again, because it wants to uh, make sure that you're legally allowed to go in that. When we, as we get into this admin section, I'm gonna, I want to stop for just a second and tell you that these are, these are critical pieces for you to link to because it makes your system work the way you want it to work. Okay, so you just simply come in here and there are, there are four main sections, profile, email preferences, groups and applications and account. Okay, so, so here's where you click on, uh, turn on your activity, on or off your activity broadcast. So if you click on that, it opens up this screen and it says by selecting this option, you let your activities be shared with your, your feed. So you let others know when you've changed your profile. Kind of important so that your, your friends and, and connections know that you've upgraded your profile because it gives you another line on that activity page. So I recommend that you click on that. You don't have to, but um, it doesn't hurt. Um, and, and like I said, it, it lets all your contacts, your, in my case, 2,400 people, know that I've upgraded my account, that I made some change to it, okay? So again, as long as you're not abusing um, that feed, people will see that, okay? So I recommend that you have that open so that people can see it. Select who can see your feed activity. Now you've got a couple of choices. Only your network, only your connections, or, or only you. Okay, so if you, if, you have a, if you have this set on only your connections, in my case, it would be those 2,400 people. If you have 12 connections, it would be only those 12 people. Okay, um, not a real good idea because, again, you want as much exposure as possible. If you put it in your network, that means anybody in your, not only your connections, but also in your groups. Okay, um, but I, I just, and the easiest is just to log on and let everybody see your, see your activity. Um, who can see your connections? Now, this is a little bit different. You notice that I've got mine selected to only I can see my connections, okay? So when you go onto my screen, you can't see my connection. When you and I get connected together, you can't see my connections. Now. I do that from a business standpoint because my connections are valuable to me as, as resources for putting them in jobs. So I try not to get connected to other recruiters, but I, because of my network association, I am connected to uh, quite a few of them that, we, that I do business with. I trade leads back and forth. Okay, so I don't, I've got this turned off because I don't want those people to be able to see my connections. Okay? It may not be important to you, um, but in my business association, um, it is important. Um, for you, um, to, in your initial days, I would say leave this open so that when people can look at your profile and they see that they're looking for Joe Schmo and they see that you are a connected profile, then they can link through you. So unless you've got a sensitive business like mine, I recommend you probably leave that open, but that's up to you. All right, change your, uh, your profile. Uh, we've already gone through that. You can do it from here, but it's, it's just going to take you back to that front screen where we started. Um, show, show and hide viewers of your profile. Um, yeah, you, this kind of, this, I, I just, I would recommend you to leave this checked. It's defaulted checked, so that's not a big deal. Um, just, just leave that the way it is. Manage your Twitter settings. Uh, that depends on if you've got a Twitter account. Edit your name location industry, edit your profile, all that stuff takes you back to your profile, okay? There are three possibilities. You can be anonymous, you can do what I say is a skeleton view, or you can show your whole profile. I recommend, again, LinkedIn is about being found. So if you, I recommend that you open this up to, so that they can see your full profile. Um, and I'll show you how this works. There's a section over here called people who have viewed your profile. You click on that, it opens up this screen, 
And so you see a number of things, okay? Here's an anonymous user, okay? Somebody that had that anonymous, anonymous box clicked, clicked. So nobody can see who they are. Well, again, this is about being connected. It's about exposure. So why would you have yourself set it anonymous? You know, I, I go in here and I look at this, and, and tonight I'll go in here and I'll send Jan a message. I'll say, hey, Jan, I saw that you viewed my profile. Uh, you probably noticed that I'm an executive recruiter. Can I help you? Okay, so it's a good chance for me to connect with other people. Um, I can't connect with these anonymous people, okay, because there's no connection there. This one has the shell, someone in the wireless industry from Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, so if I click on that, it opens up a list, and I can go down through here and maybe try to guess somebody who might have connected to me. But again, it's pretty much useless. So, you know, if you're going to be out here, you might as well have it click so that everybody can see your whole profile, so they know that you look at their profile and you can make a connection. You have to be a paid person. You have to have upgraded your account to a paid position. Okay. Yeah. Data. Go down here to upgrade your account, and it will show you what class you're in. Okay. All right, so there's, there's a class over here that's not shown because I'm... I'm not a free class, I'm a free member, I'm in this business class. Okay, so if you click on show more, it'll show you all the examples. Okay, so, so here's, here's the, the difference. There's, again, there's a fourth one, there's a free, free over here. And so, you know, it's like here's the end mail thing. So by upgrading this, you get these three free uh, end mails. And if, you, if I upgrade next, I get 10 free. And if I upgrade over here, I get 25 free. Okay, so, um, so that's, what, that's what that's for, so you can upgrade your account. Now, here's a, a, an interesting part about this tool. I don't know how long this is going to be because LinkedIn is now a public company, so I don't know how long this is going to be, but right now you can move from panel to panel. Okay, so in my case right now, I'm, I pay nineteen ninety-five a month. All right, if I've got a really heavy search going on, I might come over here and upgrade for a month pay $100 so I get these extra tools. So instead of just seeing 300 people, I can see 700 people. So I can get 25 messages and those kind of things. So I might upgrade for a month, do my search, and then downgrade to the other service. I don't know how long they're gonna let you move between services, but right now you can. Let's go back then to the screen and we were in email preferences. So you can select the types of messages you get. You can get the frequency of emails. This is really important. This is, remember I told you you're gonna get individual feeds. So you can go in here and change this from individual emails to weekly digest or no email. So these are invitations, here's in mails, here's profile forwards, all this kind of stuff. And you can scroll down and you can set all these individual things to your liking there. The default is, um, is the individual email. Um, if you see that you're getting a lot of unnecessary mail that you don't want, this is where you can go in and you can regulate that, change some of those settings around for you. Especially for groups. Especially for groups. We'll talk about groups in a minute. Yeah. Turn on and off announcements, invitations to participate in research. The, uh, let me close that. This is really important, folks. See this one right here? Turn on or off invitations to participate in research. Okay? So you click on that and it opens up the screen. And it says, yes, I'd like to receive invitations to participate in research studies. You sh and it's the you should turn that off. That's where they give, you give them permission to use your profile for ads and, and information. Okay? So I recommend everybody to turn that off. Okay? They changed the, the privacy settings. They upgraded my privacy settings a few months ago and added that statement in there. If you haven't been in this section, you haven't seen that to know to uncheck it. Actually, somebody pointed it out to you the other day, didn't they? Well, they didn't point it out to me. I've had this off for months, okay. but it was, in, it was in our, it was in the, it was in the link across the valley discussions. Um, so that's really important to turn that off so they don't get to use your contact information, your demographics for their uses. All right, so click that so it's off and then save the changes. Um, all right, so that's the important thing. Go down to groups. Here are your group selections so that you can change your group settings. You can, um, you can see the, view the groups, your groups. You can change your settings, digest. Here's another section. This is, where, this is the groups. This is an important thing. Again, this defaults to daily digest. If you're in 58 groups like I'm in, 
you're going to be swamped with emails. So you want to go in and change this to either um, to either a uh, daily digest or a weekly digest, depending on how active you are in each one of these groups. Okay, uh, and you'll notice that in a lot of the groups that I'm in, um, they're set on weekly. The job, the the groups that where I live in on a daily basis, I'm getting daily message from them because I want to see what's going on inside those individual groups. So you can regulate this. You can come in here and change it anytime you want from a weekly digest, a daily digest to no digest. And, and so th that's really important. And again, the more groups you get in, the more important this piece is right here to make sure you're not spending all day scamming through or skinning, skimming through, you know, 300 emails about various activities going on in your sections. All of this admin section is, is accessible from any page. Up at the top you'll have your name and it says settings or sign out. So you click on settings and it brings you into this section. Okay, and in conclusion, I'm David McElhaney with Global Recruiters of Huntsville and this has been an installment in the How To Series for the Women's Business Center of North Alabama. Center of North Alabama, WBCNA, is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to help women and men start and grow a business and generate economic growth for the region. This is accomplished by serving as the premier source for information and access to resources, facilitating their self discovery and personal development, and providing a mentoring process to support, nurture, and WBCNA's services include startup assistance and nurturing, access to reduced rate services, access to financing, networking and business matchmaking opportunities, referrals to other resources, counseling and formal mentoring, executive level coaching, and business advisory boards. Specialized services of the WBCNA include the Government Procurement Assistance Center and the Veterans Business Assistance Center. For more information about WBCNA, please visit our website, wbcna.org. Get personal, create success.